Chances in with second glances in expected places. Something that's worth waiting for, but never hesitating for. Events, though quite auspicious, are seldom repetitions among a billion. Faces. True love synchronizes to the universe, surprises you and Asia Brighton. Everything's just right when the right one comes along. Your heart's a flutter, you stammer and stutter. Everything's a song. Well, at least that's what the poets say. And I'm not here to prove them wrong. So dream that dream and just be strong until the right one. Chapter One. We first met in a curiosity shop in Hillsboro Village, Nashville, Tennessee, a quaint, pedestrian-friendly neighborhood adjacent to Vanderbilt University, the former home to Alan Tate, Robert Penn Warren, Randall Jarrell, and for a young poet of the new formalism, the place to be. I was rummaging through a pile of old books out front. It looked like the aftermath of a bomb explosion at a philosopher's convention. The usual hardcover victims scattered about from Emerson, Plato, Coleridge. I had read them all before, and as much as they had saved my life at one time, I felt obliged to come to their aid when, when suddenly I, I saw her standing there. A remark concerning a particular country and western album she was holding up led to more friendly chatter about America's greatest musical gift to the world when she moved and the sweater tied around her waist brushed my arm and a galaxy exploded inside my heart. She wondered if the man inside, with the record player, would be so kind as to check the condition of Western Swing Fiddle Masters Volume 1. And I said, well, there's really only one way to find out. 
As the first song began to play, the nostalgic shopkeeper and the young woman with the sweater tied around her waist started to dance. After circling the tables of used clothing, dolls, antiques, and sports memorabilia, they stopped directly in front of me. The natural thing to do would have been to cut in, but, but I hesitated. think. Her eyes traced a disappointed arc, when suddenly a clap of thunder and a gust of wind blew back the covers of books, as the wind chimes played a strange coda, and the old song faded. Standing underneath the awning outside, I, I spied a peculiar-looking umbrella in the window. Surprised at myself, I bolted back in, bought the thing, and offered it to the girl with the sweater draped around her shoulders. It was an easy thing for her to accept, and she smiled. It quit raining for a moment, and we must have said goodbye. I remember seeing, I remember looking back and seeing the girl in the sweater with the peculiar-looking umbrella bob and weave her way through the crowd and disappear around the corner. Chapter two. Well, it was no accident we kept bumping into each other. A man's sudden interest in vintage country and western albums doesn't just happen. He has to be inspired. From the Latin in spiritus, breathe into, spirit filled. So the music of Hank Thompson, Spade Cooley, Moon Mulligan, Patsy Montana, Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, and George Jones became the soundtrack of those early days together. George's classic 1974 album, The Grand Tour, resulted in weeknight cappuccinos at the university grill while she was studying for semester exams. Johnny Cash, live at Folsom Prison, became the perfect excuse to try our hand at Szechuan stir fry. And my personal favorite, Merle Haggard, poet of the common man, was a bittersweet Monday morning, just back from our first weekend trip to San Francisco. Everything new. Everything bright, endless possibilities and unspoken assurances, like children assured of a dinner, spending the hours of our lives like millionaires. Well, that was me, believe it or not, or at least I'm asking you to believe it, or we're not going to get anywhere. A lot of things happen over time, and some things have changed, and some things have not changed. But here, it's always then, now.
going. How does the story hey, end? Hey, hey. Oh, what happens in the end? Does he get the girl, lose the girl, get the girl back? You know, what happens? I don't know yet. Oh, come on! Everybody wants a happy ending. I know. I know. They're out to dinner. A nice place. Not too nice. No, then she might suspect something. Table in the back. But not too far in the back. The waiter. A bottle of champagne. No wine. Nope, champagne. A good bottle, but... But not too good? Right. Right. See? There. We're on the same page. Well, not exactly. You see, the male character feels that he may be at risk. At risk? For what? That she turns him down? That she's not the one? No, it's... It's, well... He's concerned that if he possessed her, he would cease to desire her. Oh, I see. So, it's the classic theme of the desire for happiness and self-betrayal. The artist in his self-loathing idealizes the object of his affection as the unattainable top form of love and sexual fulfillment, thereby relieving himself of the need to experience the frailties of real human emotion. <laughs> Memorized it. For a psych one test. Not even sure what it means after all this time. Uh, I'll figure it out. Right now I just don't want to even think anymore. Let's go back to bed. Make love all day, forget a career, what the world thinks, make it happen. And give up on your book? Are you kidding? I imagine you're just exhausted. Look, take a break. Come back to it later. You're probably right. But there's nothing quite like it, you know? When it's really going well, your mind hopping from stone to stone, then pausing, considering, taking action, choosing, deciding. There's so much freedom in that. And you are such a wonderful writer. And once your book is published, then we'll be able to get married. Oh, 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 oh. But until then, ain't we happy with the way things are? <coughs> We've got sunshine and laughter, joy in the afternoon.
Well, we're still on for dinner, though, right? That's the plan. Is that crazy roommate of yours still joining us? Who knows? He was supposed to perform tonight, but I haven't seen him in the past 24 hours, so... Ah, uh, Mr. Music City. I don't see why you still feel the need to share an apartment with him. Or anybody, for that matter. It's not like you need the money. Your parents were generous enough to see to that. It's not about the money. He's a friend. You don't just kick out a friend. Well, I just wonder when your friend is going to stop fooling himself. The music industry is not exactly knocking down his door. He's a good songwriter. He just needs a break. Yeah. Well, Mother will be impressed. She'll have questions about us again, you know. And they've been a whole lot easier to deal with on the phone. Look. Don't worry, everything will be just fine. Yeah, like we were over Christmas holiday. You couldn't wait to get out of Charleston. I was just a little nervous from meeting her for the first time, that's all. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Okay. Private perfection. 
question. While nature Where did you get that? <laughs> I helped you study for that philosophy final, remember? But you keep it in your wallet. Yeah, as a reminder. Man seeks in marriage his own private perfection. While nature hides in his happiness the survival of the species. <laughs> Don't you see? It's a natural conspiracy. <laughs> to be used by nature so. These ends we do not know. Yet blindly we all go along. Like lemmings off a cliff, we gladly follow her riff and all just end up stiff. It's just wrong. Such an evil plan to undermine the rights of man. I just don't understand it at all. For if life is like a stage, then a stage within a cage, with Mother Nature's finger on the latch, you introduce the ring and you blow the whole damn thing, because they're the gasoline and we're the match. <laughs> and what about free will? Free, that is, until they're one day off the pill and we're sucked. Because <laughs> soon we're putting diapers on screaming little vipers. Why it's enough to turn a man into a boss. Why marriage? Why bother? If the whole thing's just a trick, well, well, I'd rather not do it. <laughs> Why go through it? He really had it made, and then he blew it. For behind each door, so Brenda lies a hidden agenda. And it's a crowded hacienda at last. Why marriage? Why disparage? Why buy the cow? Why take it all? When a little's all you need. You don't take a stroke out. I think you do. 
So now society says you've got to decide whether you want to marry her or not. I think you won't, because you're scared. Maybe. But some ideas are just too big to tackle head on. You have to be sure of certain things. I'm certain I need a shower. Look, let's say that physical attraction is, we'll say, 25%. And intellectual compatibility is another 45%. Okay? That leaves 30%. Nearly a third of the whole to what? Fate? Chance? And what about the heart? Wait a minute. I'm confused, Mr. Why by the cow, the milk is free. Well, we're talking about your heart here. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Still. When you look at all the various. Excuse me! It is Professor Vanderbilt! How do you feel? How do you know? Shout. How can you be sure if she's the one? No, I've never been so giddy. You're wondering, should you stay or should you run? Where I dance, where I am, when she's there. After everything said and done. Before you turn her heart away, I've never felt so. There's something I should say. How do you Do you see her even when she isn't there? Very thought of her And when she is, there is something near. What is this feeling that implores me? You've lost your heart, but you don't know where. Sunshine and it's rain I'm about myself, it's pleasure and it's peace. Or so much You're losing sleep. I so the thoughts you keep. That's so inspired. Do they say, give it all you've got? Well, if they don't, then she's not the one.
my life. I must tell you all about it. How was your trip? Oh, honey, just imagine. 14 women from the Charleston Historical Society, recently divorced, widowed, or otherwise emancipated, all huddled together on a bus for a once-in-a-lifetime arrive and thrive shopping spree in Music City, USA. Oh, it's been fabulous. <laughs> the driver and the staff from the touring company could not have been more accommodating. And between the choruses of On the Road Again and Mournfully to the Cross, we draped sweet Jesus. The time just flew. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, no, honey, I'm fine. I just need to give my poor old feet a rest. You like these? Why, yes. Are they comfortable? Of course not. They're almost $500. <laughs> oh, your place looks lovely. You've somehow managed to maintain a portion of your southern sensibilities after all this time. Well, it's not like I moved to Boston, Mother. Well, I beg your pardon, dear, but coming from South Carolina, Nashville's not exactly south. <laughs> so, how's your garden doing this spring? Oh, it's the philodendrons, dear. I can't seem to keep them alive. Perhaps you should bring them in on the porch. Might seem to be doing better in partial sunlight, despite what the man at the nursery told me. The man at the nursery? What else did he tell you? Nothing, mother. <laughs> and I believe he's married. Besides, things are going quite well between Arthur and myself. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't imagine who I ran into last week. I can't imagine. Anna Mae Goldberg. You might remember her oldest son. Donnie Goldberg? Oh. Yeah, well, that's him, yeah. Good old Donnie. Well, good old Donnie's doing quite well for himself these days. Really? Quite. He has opened up three Piggly Wigglies and a Popeye's fried chicken. Oh, I can almost smell his success from here. Oh, well, Anna Mae just told me to tell you Donnie sends his regards, that's all. Well, I do talk to Sarah occasionally. She keeps me up on the old gang. Whatever happened to that nice boy from the neighborhood of Barry something or another? Barry, remember? Barry Foster from yeah. high school? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Mary. Oh. He had a friend. A tall, good looking boy. Mary. Well, most of them are, dear. But you know, I always adored Mr. and Miss Baldolf's son. Divorce. Greg Spry. Remarried. Danny Lamb. Gay. What? Yes, gay. What, for heaven's sakes, how do you know? How do I know? He married Barry Foster. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I never. <laughs> well, whatever flips your switch. <laughs> oh, honey, if there's one thing I have learned, it's doing what makes you happy. I was a sinner and raised in the biblical way. Save in your soul what you plan for tomorrow.
Sit up. Close your eyes. All right, hold your hands out. No. No peeking. Today, he would make sure that we were very well aware of a certain young man's intentions as far as his only daughter is concerned. I knew that was coming, but I can assure you, Arthur's intentions are quite honorable. I just don't think he thinks he's ready yet. Oh, for heaven's sakes, when's a man going to be ready? Y'all been seeing each other for what, two years now? You'd think a man of his age would have some inkling as to what he want to do in his life. <laughs> A man who takes an interest in a young lady has certain responsibilities and string her along like some kind of puppy on a leash is not one of them. I'm surrounded by a million voices telling me things that I should do. What will they understand? These are my choices. I make them for me, not you. Young people should have more respect for things like that, and more respect for themselves, too. Young lady isn't young forever. 
And a man is less likely to stop and smell the roses if those roses are wilted. A man don't have to look in the mirror as often as we do Just either. let me draw my own conclusions. These things are mine alone to say. Wish me luck and let me face my own illusions. I'll live my life my way. parent to accept the fact that their only daughter is just spinning her wheels at a time We've been seeing each other for more than a couple years, okay? Sorry, dear? Three years, two months, one week, three days, and... Oh, I think my clock has stopped. Well, that doesn't surprise me one bit. And all I ever wanted was grandchildren. <laughs> Very funny, mother. Not that clock. I'm not making excuses for him either. He's a grown man. We have talked. We've discussed responsibilities. It's his book. His damn book. It seems to be all he ever thinks about lately. But can you imagine? I mean, what a huge undertaking. Besides, I'm crazy about him. Oh, sweetie. I just want you to be careful. Yes, I know. I'm being careful. Well, I suppose a nap would do me some good after all. Oh, goodness. Gracious, all the book. Yeah, it's a book. I love you, sweet pea. I love you too, Mama. Since I was very young, I dreamed of romance and trusted in the hope one day I find a boy so brave and strong who likes to slow dance. That classic look, straight from a book.
brings you back Way the raindrops glisten in the dark Couples holding hands in summer park Million diamond rings, what brings you back? The accidental mention of your name So many years inside a picture frame An old friend's remark, it's just one of those things
great strides in my book this afternoon. No, I just couldn't stop. At some point, I looked up from a dozen pages of my own handwriting, and it was already getting dark outside. <laughs> hey, I can vouch for him. On my way out tonight, I asked to borrow a tie, and he was so busy writing, he just grunted. Again, I apologize.
Bug tussy? Frog boy. Um, then a short stint in Gray Nola. After that, Elk City. But I'm originally from Pocatuck. What? <laughs> Everybody's got to be from somewhere. <laughs> Not a Yankee or a Hoosier or a Canuck, but everybody's got to be from somewhere like Pocatuck. Yes, ma'am. Well, hey, hey y'all learn this. I'm from Charleston, USA, so T-A-R-O-L-I-N-A. I'm from Charleston. Well, what did you tell her? 
As much as I know, I guess. Oh, she worries too much since Daddy's passed on. She just wants what's best. You want what's best, don't you? Well, of course. I mean, I think we all do, naturally. One wouldn't intentionally want something other than what's best. I mean, I guess there are some situations in which we can see the Oh boy, there I go again. Yeah, there you go again. <laughs> Mother bought me another movie on v VCR, VHS. Can you believe it? I better have like 20 of those things by now. I didn't have the heart to tell her that I don't even own a VCR anymore. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, do you remember that place we went to? That time? Place by the river, you know, Heartland, next to Heartland? Yeah. Well, they had the most beautiful gerber daisies there last week. I don't know why I love gerber daisies so much, or any flowers for that matter. It's always been amazing to me how living things do much better once they're confined and cared for. It's like the time I remember as a child. Mother had the hardest time with this one little rose bush that grew wild by the side of the house. No matter what she did, the poor little thing never seemed to do very well. Then, one day, Daddy put a fence around it, and in no time, the thing started to look like a real rose bush. In fact, I think it's still here after all those years. Ushering of spring. She, when she laughs, turns all things towards her, hopeful like the sun. She phrases her imagination, and I am suspended in her shadow, like an attentive blade of grass, like the veil of night descending. She entraps me when she speaks. Oh, that's sweet. Where did you? You know, you are what is best. Oh, I don't know. No, I mean it. You're an incredible woman. Anyone can see that. Just not the kind you could ever see yourself marry? No, it's, it's not true at all. It's just this book. It's taking up so much of my time, but I just know that once you finally read it, it was the
happens only once, twice, in a blue moon. And only time can tell if I open up my heart too soon. Let's hold on to each other.
divine intervention, maybe. A foothold. So. Coming face to face with some of the bigger questions in life, he knew not what to do, so he prayed. <coughs> Kierkegaard, his melancholy made him unsuitable for marriage, having never gotten over the loss of his one true love to a rival suitor. He died brokenhearted and dedicated his writings to her forever. How about angst? Uh. Now, a man is truly a man who, in the absence of companionship, female or otherwise, can in the private sanctity of his own imagination, find intellectual stimulation and physical relief. Intellectual stimulation and physical relief? <laughs> well, Dr. Carl Wolfgang Schlittenhaus, PhD, not exactly what I was looking for. Epicurus, never married, died of kidney stones. Well, in doubt, flip and point. Emerson. A man seeks in marriage his own private perfection, while nature hides in his happiness the survival of the species. To be used by nature so, whose ends we do not know, yet blindly we all go along. Like lemmings off a cliff, we gladly follow her riff, and all just end up stiff, it's just wrong. It don't take a stroke of genius, it's economics ABC, oh why buy the cow when the milk is free? Oh. 
chapter 19. I tried for six months, but she wouldn't see me. She changed her numbers and her routine. Then one day I came across her name in a newspaper announcing an upcoming graduation ceremony at Vanderbilt. She was there amid a crowd of other names, column after column of strangers surrounding the one person in the whole world I ever really knew. The irony? Well, the ceremony was taking place on the very same evening as my scheduled book release. I wondered if she'd be thinking of me, but I knew she would. As for Clara and Mr. Music City, a postcard arrived out of the blue one day <laughs> from somewhere in Thailand. Seems they've been traveling together a good bit. They're even making plans to film a pilot for a reality TV show in the world's most exciting cities. <laughs> Sunshine and laughter, joy in the afternoon.
few mentions it did get were, were all in agreement. The romantic notion is dead. Buried for a century and a half in an unmarked grave. <laughs> and this. Yes. People want information, not poetry. The finer emotions are things of the past. Subtlety and nuance. We all want love, sure. But kiss me well enough and get on with me. But the public disagreed. Or did they disagree? They came in droves. They spent in droves. They stood in long lines for signed copies of television appearances, radio interviews. There was even a major motion picture. There were even uh, reverberations felt in other parts of the world. Even a, a few translations, even. Even a, a movement, new romantic movement, dedicated to a renewal of the human spirit, of mature sentiment and romance, the triumph of love and art. There was talk of another book deal, of course, that I declined. Besides, talk is cheap, and one already cost me a life. If she could just read these final chapters, every chapter, every word written for her, inspired by her, then she'd know the truth. Graduation. If there's time, there's hope.
chapter 20. There's a light that settles on the contours of this city, which in late November manages to soften the jagged edges of despair and loneliness. I remember how, if only for an hour, the weight of words were made lighter while searching some stranger's face for some meaning akin to my own, and how the emptiness I felt then doesn't compare to the emptiness I feel now that she is no longer a part of the trivialities of my day. I realize now what I've lost and know what I must do. A nice place, but not too nice. A table in the back, but not too far in the back. The waiter, a bottle of champagne, a good bottle. A ring, a promise, and tomorrow. And tomorrow after that. And thousands of tomorrows after that. Straight ahead. So I just live my life and I keep it here. 